Hello, I'm Anita Lopez. Welcome to Comcast Newsmakers, where we bring you news and information about people making a difference. Joining me today is Senator Josh Penry. Thanks for joining me, Senator. Pleasure to be with you. You've been working on some education reform, so why don't we just um, go straight to it. Basically, um, you're wanting to, in conjunction with some others, overhaul the system. What is behind that and what are some of the things you're looking at? You know, there's a, a really important bipartisan conversation going on in the legislature. Myself, Governor Owen, or excuse me, Governor Ritter, and, and Senator Chris Romer are really working on a comprehensive overhaul of the K through 12 education system, mm -hmm. top to bottom. And the dynamic is this: the China and India, the developing world, are churning out engineers at an, an, a remarkable rate. There was a recent analysis by a Nobel laureate that said 90% of the world's engineer will live in Asia wow. within the next five years. And in, in a world where science and engineering is the coin of the realm, we need more engineers. And so really we're trying to ramp up our rigor in our education system so we can compete with what's going on in the rest of the world and in the rest of the country. Because at this point we are outsourcing an amazing amount of workforce, um, which we could just be growing right here in our backyard. That's right. And when you talk to people in the high, t high tech sector, the defense sector, the, which we have a significant presence here, in Colorado, they can't find the workforce. And over time, if you can't match um, labor up with, with the employer, employer's needs, they're going to take their, their businesses elsewhere. So it's also not only in terms of helping our kids succeed in the, in the world, it's also economic development, making right. sure we have a skilled worker base. So when we're looking at the overhaul, is it um, obviously it's not going to be only focused on improving the engineering backgrounds, right. but um, what are some other things that you're looking at to you know boost the overall quality of education and really funneling um, our students to prepare them for those prime spots? Well, uh, the first thing we're doing is over triggering an overhaul of the model content standards, and that's a complicated way of the model can content standards just measure what we want kids to know at a grade level or when they take a specific course. Those content standards haven't been updated since 1992. A lot's changed since then, so that's the first thing. The second thing is the instruments we use to test kids, commonly known as CSAP, need right. to be modernized and evolved to meet the, both the, to match both what we're teaching them in these model content standards and to make them more useful to teachers. For example, if you talk to teachers now, one of the problems with CSAP is they don't get the information back um, for about six months. And so by the time the student has moved on to the next grade, they find out where they're deficient, there's not that opportunity to come back and address ah. them. So we're really working on trying to modernize the assessment, in this case the CSAP, to match the content standards and make it more useful to teachers and schools. Right. Now, you were talking about also um, creating a way to um, automatically, I, I guess, provide an incentive for kids to not only go to college, right. but you know, get entry into a college as well by another um, idea, or I don't know, is it a, a program that, that you have in mind? Well, we'll have this, we're, we're gonna update the model content standards and uh, update the assessment. The third piece of what we're working on with the governor and others in the legislature is to really create a gold standard um, graduate, statewide graduation diploma. That's a really rigorous track in terms of math and science and English, the, the core areas. It's, it's modeled after a program that's been in New York for a long time, the New York Regents program. Mm -hmm. um, and so for the kids who, students who get on that track, they're going to really receive uh, an incredibly rigorous um, education on the K through 12 side. And a piece of that over time would probably be a guaranteed admission into a state college or university. And maybe over time you can involve the program to include scholarships so that we really incentivize kids to get into the most rigorous programs. Again, so they can personally compete in this global right. economy, but also to make sure as a, as a society we're keeping up as well. Now, are you modeling this overhaul um, in comparison to any other states or things that you have seen, maybe other countries? It, it is. I mean, this is not unique to Colorado. It's a conversation that's taking place all over um, the, the country because of what's happening in the world. And other states have, have pushed down this path, and they're three or four years ahead of us. And so we're, we're trying to borrow on some of the best um, ideas and some of the things we just talked about are, are, are modeled on what other, sta other states have. Colorado has a unique sort of challenge that we have to address. We're a local control state, and so creating these statewide standards, there's some tension in doing it. But I just think it's important that, and, and I know the governor and others do too, that we hold all kids on a statewide basis to the highest standards. Well, there's more consistency that way then. I would that is, and, and when they move on to college or universities, they can expect that they're well-trained. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Senator, for joining us today. It's been Thanks a pleasure. Thanks for having me. Pleasure. I'm Anita Lopez, and you have been watching Comcast Newsmakers.